Hola, Minecraft fans, it's gone. Do we got some more Magneticraft? Today we're going to look at the miner from Magneticraft. And it works pretty much like everything else it works like a query or, a, um, you know, an ender query or pretty much every other mining system. It's just another way to do it in Magneticraft. And <laughs> there are a little bit of caveats with this thing, so. Let me point it out. The so first thing we do is, if you put this block down, this, uh, the pickaxe is the front of it. It's not rotatable with a wrench. You can't break it with a wrench. You have to break it with tools. Uh, and it starts out by default in an 11 by 11, and it will replace the blocks with dirt, and it will leave the water. You can toggle these so you can tell, have it remove water and lava. You can have it um, not replace everything with dirt. It's pretty, and you can increase this up to, I think it goes up to like 40 by 40, and it goes down pretty low too. You can set it down, well, 10 by 10. So it's a pretty big thing. Now, one thing to note about this, when you place this thing down, uh, you want to be careful before you turn this on because this is the front of the machine. What it will clear out is everything on the back of the machine. So if I place this right here and power it, it's actually going to clear out all of these blocks. And what it does is this this area starts in the center. So an 11 by 11 would be uh, five on each side and one in the middle. So it would be this block and then one, two, three, four, five, and then five this way. And it also goes up about six blocks. <laughs> so when you're setting one of these up, I got one over here, and it is facing, um, it's facing this direction. So I can't put any power connections behind this machine, any other contraptions, no storage stuff. If you put anything behind this machine and power it up, it will gobble all that stuff up. So yeah, the first time I tried to play with one of these, I you know, generated some power and fed it in from the back and it ate all the power stuff up. So that is one of the things you want to be careful of. One thing you can do is you can turn on like the redstone signal before you uh, hook up all your power. And the other thing is this thing is an energy hog. It takes a lot of power. So what does it say? It tells us in here. 10,000 joules per block mined. So it sucks up a lot of power. So one of the things with Magnetocraft is there isn't really, um, there's not a really easy way to transport power. Uh, at first I couldn't find an easy way, but I did find one way to do it. So if you generate steam in Magneticraft, you can send steam through another mod. So we got Ender Tanks from Ender Storage, and we're using um, thermal expansions. These are the Super Laminar Fluid Ducts. So as long as the Ender Tank, which it does when you flip it, pushes steam out, you can use the Super Laminar, and this has unlimited steam flow. <laughs> so the way this would work is we have a remote base generating steam and stored in like some sort of tank or barrel or drum or something. And then we remote transfer that steam over here. And then we just have a bunch of steam generators. And I got 15 of these things because <laughs> this uses a ton of power. And another thing to know about how the Magnetocraft power works is the power actually flows through the different machines. So because this machine is attached to that one, the power from here will flow that way. So we don't need a bunch of power cables all the way back. We only need one power cable. And these are producing low voltage. And we are converting it to medium voltage we are actually got two converters because I'm pretty sure that 15 of these are going to max out one converter. <laughs> and I have this set to clear blocks and clear lava just to show you what it looks like. Um, and then we just have it hooked up to uh, applied energetics. So the uh, this thing, I don't, I, can you attach pipes? I don't think you can attach item conduits. I don't think item conduits attach directly to this, but you can put like a chest on here. Um, anywhere really and it will put the stuff it mines into an adjacent inventory so probably what you're going to have to do is feed from this thing to an adjacent inventory and luckily the way applied energetics works this ME interface and this is AE2 so only the block version works the facade type version of the interface doesn't but the block type version has a storage so the miner will treat this like a attached chest and stick stuff in here and that will go into our um, ME system. So right now there's nothing in here. <laughs> and this thing is set with a red stone control. So if I turn this on, 
There we go. You can see it starts to clear out a bunch of blocks. Yeah, and it goes from the top down and it just go in one line and go in another line. And this is the uh, AA2 meteor. Yeah, this is, so this is like a fallen meteor thing. Uh, Skystone, right? So in the center of this is a chest. And you'll find chests in like abandoned mine shafts and stuff too. One thing to note about the miner, and most miners work this way. Uh, like the ender query works the same way and a build craft query works the same way. When it mines a chest, it won't actually take the contents out of the chest. It will just fall on the ground. So when this thing gets to the chest in the middle of the meteor there, it's actually going to mine the chest, put the chest in the inventory, but it's not going to you know, take the contents of the chest. So you'd have to go down and retrieve that. That's one thing to note. But that's a, a miner from Magneticraft, and these things are powerful beasts. It takes a ton of power. What is this thing using right now? It is using, look at that thing. Yeah, 15 of these I don't think is enough. 1.4, it'll feed as much, it'll take as much power as you can feed into this thing. Uh, so these things are going, are they producing steam? They're not producing enough power. I don't think, yeah, so you're going to have to put a lot of power in here. And like I said, steam's probably the most, the best way to get remote power in. And then we just have a, a steam turbine, which is my factory loaded, which we're using to power our AE2 because we need to generate some RF to get into it. Well, you don't have to do RF. You can do uh, IC2 power, but we're generating some RF and using that to power our ME controller. So you can see this mining a whole bunch of stuff, and it goes pretty dang fast. And there is no filters of this, at least not that I could find. So it's pretty much going to mine everything. And if you set it to replace with dirt, I don't think it actually mines the dirt, so you wouldn't get dirt in this system. But since I told it to clear everything out, it's mining the dirt and everything. And you don't have to supply it with dirt. It does actually just generate dirt itself, just like an inner query. So you can see it going down there pretty fast. Or, well, kind of fast. <laughs> so that is the miner from Magneticraft. And like I said, be careful when you place this down, because it will mine everything behind it, including about six blocks up and everything in 11 by 11 or whatever size you set this to that starts uh, one block here and then goes halfway out one way and halfway out the other so you know like I said 11 is one here and then 5 that way and 5 that way so that's the miner from Magneticraft hopefully you guys understand how this thing works and if you want to try it out make sure to feed it lots of power um, maybe some steam maybe you can find a better way to send some power you'd probably need about 20 coal generators to get this thing to work <laughs> 20 basic generators. So thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody who likes and subscribes. And we'll catch you guys later.